Today on Monkey Life. I was lost her. It's goodbye to a much loved orangutan matriarch. It just wasn't to be. Just tragic. There's just no other way to say it. While a new arrival at the nursery gets to meet her first grown up. Yeah, let's just see what happens here. Oh, that's cute. And Chimp Buxom demonstrates raspberries can be part of a perfectly balanced diet. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I think this one's a little boy, and I think that this that one over there might be an older lady. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 20 different species. It's been a roller coaster year at the park, with many highs and some lows for the team and the primates they care for. But with the onset of autumn, emotions are high once more. For the last week, orangutan mum Xiao Kwai has been unwell with a urinary tract infection. The team have been treating her with antibiotics. Although she's been going outside, she's been eating and drinking very little. This morning, Xiao Kwai has taken a turn for the worse. Jeremy, who's known her since she was rescued from Taiwan, went into her bedroom to help her. He tried to persuade her to take some fluids without success. But as the day progressed, it became obvious Xiao Kwai was very unwell, and vet John Lewis was called in. She had a history of, um, for want of a better phrase, a lazy bowel, where the bowels would come to, and the guts basically would stop moving, which is quite life-threatening. And it did occur to us that that might be happening again. With Xiao Kuai becoming severely dehydrated, something needed to be done, and quickly. John decided to give her a thorough examination. Anesthetizing any primate is risky, and the decision to do so isn't taken lightly. Unfortunately, just as John was getting started, Xiao Kuai went into heart failure. Despite the team's best efforts, she couldn't be resuscitated and passed away. I was lost her. It just wasn't to be. And it's really sad and it's hard to talk about, but you know, you do everything you can for the guys. And sometimes there's just really no proper answer. And in hindsight, nothing that you really even would have done differently. So just tragic. There's just no other way to say it. You know, young, relatively young individual, brilliant mom, not that that even matters so much. Her, Youngsters are all old enough now that that doesn't matter so much, but an important person in herself. Um, again, my heart goes out, yes, for Xiao Kuai and what the rest of her life could have been, but also for Jeremy, of course, who is instrumental in the care and rescue of so many of these guys from such a young age. And then he's there in the very end too, and he was for Xiao Kuai as well. Xiao Kuai arrived at the park in 2001 from the Ping Tung Rescue Center in Taiwan. She was stolen from the wild and later rescued from a Taiwanese amusement arcade, where she'd been abandoned along with two other orangutans. When Jim, Allison and Jeremy first met her at Ping Tung, she was living with Xiao Lan and Lucky, and all three made the journey to Dorset. Xiao Kuai thrived at the park, and in 2005, gave birth to her first son, Kai. Four years later, 
Baby number two arrived, Jin. Xiao Kuai was the perfect mum. She's the only orangutan at the park, so far, to have cared for her babies. These wonderful maternal instincts came to the fore in 2012, when another female orangutan, Xiao Lan, gave birth to baby Awan, but rejected her. Xiao Kuai, who was still feeding Jin at the time, took up the reins and brought Awan up as her own. She's just a lovely, well-adapted, confident little girl, and that's all because of Xiao Kuai. So, you know, her own boys, yeah, I guess it's a mother's duty to step up to the plate and do that, but, you know, job well done, because both of them are just lovely lads. Um, but she went that extra mile, didn't she, Xiao Kuai? She looked after somebody else's baby and has done a brilliant job of it. It's just too bad there won't be any more. Being such a perfect mum has given her children the best start in life. The hope is they too will go on to be good parents to their own future youngsters. Several days after Xiao Kuai's passing, the results of the post-mortem revealed there was little the team could have done to save her. The conclusion is really she had what's called a septicemia where the only possible source of that septicemia appeared to be her urinary tract infection, where that had spread into the bloodstream. It would have been very difficult to treat her successfully, even if we'd have diagnosed a septicemia before she died, which we didn't. Um, uh, these things happen. Xiao Kuai was such a central part of the park's culture. Her loss will be felt by all the team. This year, the park also said goodbye to a number of other much-loved primates. The loss of alpha male chimp Paddy, one of the first primates to arrive at the park, was emotional for everyone. Paddy was dignified from the moment I saw him till the moment he died, and I loved him for it. Jethro, the Saki monkey's passing, was not unexpected. He was elderly and infirm, and following a vet examination, the team were prepared for the worst. He's pretty old and um, worn out, I would say. Lucas! The unexpected loss of woolly monkey Lucas, however, came as a shock, given his young age. He was only two years old. While it's always hard to lose much-loved members of the park's animal family, life goes on for all the rescued primates at the sanctuary. At the bachelor chimp enclosure, the boys are set for a summer treat. A local supermarket has donated a large supply of raspberries, still in their punnets. Sam, from the care team, is busy placing them all over the enclosure. Fruit makes up a large percentage of a chimpanzee's diet in the wild. They also eat leaves and insects. With all the raspberries now distributed in every available nook and cranny, there should be plenty to go around for all 15 Patchula boys. The excited chimps are straight out, led by Paco. It's a race to grab the raspberries, with Ben out in front. High-ranking Paco manages to grab a couple of punnets, but is still on the lookout for more. Cleverly using his teeth, Jester carefully peels back the cellophane from his punnet before tucking into the juicy fruit. Not to be outdone, Ben tries the same technique. It seems all the chimps have the same idea. Low ranker Rocky's priority, however, is to protect his hoard. He glances around anxiously for anyone looking to steal his fruit. Jester is licking every last drop of juice from the punnet, but no one's taught him the countryside code. It seems not everyone's grabbed their share yet. Gypsy's still swinging around on the hoses and desperately searching for a box. While low ranker Kiko can only watch on as the other more dominant males make the most of it. And 
no one more so than Buxom. He seems determined to find and hoard as many punnets as he can possibly carry. The other chimps look on enviously as Buxom uses his teeth, arms and hands, plus perfect balance, to make off with the raspberries. At 35 years of age, he's one of the high-ranking chimps in the group. He arrived at the park in 1993 from Windsor Safari Park and is Jester's half-brother. He's still an agile chimp, easily climbing up high out of sight of the others to eat his hoard in peace. It's been a busy morning for the chimps, and some, like Seamus, are still savouring every berry. While Ben is determined to squeeze out every last drop of juice. And when they've finally had their fill, there's nothing better than stretching out and relaxing in the warm afternoon sunshine. For the last few weeks, Alison and the team have been hand-rearing a newborn woolly monkey whose mum, Isla, rejected at birth. But last week, there was concern for the welfare of the infant. He was losing weight, and a test revealed he was infected with a parasite. He was immediately put on medication, and his condition dramatically improved. Just over a period of a week, because things happen really quickly with tiny, vulnerable babies, I think we've turned the tide. Treated him for the parasites. Those are all gone and clear. We've done multiple tests. And yeah, you can see there's, he's just got a sparkle in his eyes now um, that definitely wasn't there last week. Staff have finally chosen a name for the young male woolly, following the park's system of naming babies with the first letter of their father's name, in this case, Chippy. And the one that everybody's agreed on for this little man is Cosmo. So this is little Cosmo, Chippy's son. Yes, you are. Oh, I know. Um, and hopefully he'll go back and join Chippy and his group in just a few months' time. While he's been poorly, Cosmo's regular visits to his family have been put on hold. But now he's put back on all the weight he lost in the previous couple of weeks and Alison is happy with his progress. I feel like we've turned back around the other direction. I was really concerned that he was dying in front of our eyes a week ago, and now I feel like we're bulking up and moving ahead and meeting developmental steps that I would want to be seeing. Um, yeah, it just all happened so quickly in, in such a tiny way. <laughs> Everything's small, huh? The youngster has also been teething, and most of his teeth have now cut through. Alison's decided to try him on solids, starting with a small amount of baby rice. Are you going to show them how good you are at eating this down? Mmm. Very tasty. I know, you're just... <laughs> staring at me too much. I need to wear a woolly monkey mask. It's a really delicate balance to provide him the comfort and support and care that he needs to talk to him, to chirp to him, to make him feel loved and wanted. Like a human baby, he needs all of those things in order to have a good, strong will to live. But at the same time, we're gonna hand him back to a group of woolly monkeys, so you don't want him so humanized that he doesn't know what to do with the woolly monkey. So it, it is a balance and it is a hard one. Alison will give Cosmo another week to make sure he's fully recovered. Then he can restart daily visits to his playroom in Chippy's house and begin to get to know his family once again. It's the start of a brand new day at the park and for one little ape, it's a new beginning in a new home. And there's a new family to meet and grow up with. Mimi has just arrived at the park from Moscow. 
the little orangutan was born at the zoo there, but was rejected by her mum at birth. She's now 21 months old, and Monkey World has accepted her into the European creche for orphaned orangutans. She's just spent her first night in one of the bedrooms at the nursery. She seemed like really happy, and she's still loving uh, cuddling her dolly hedgehog. But she looks really good, and she has lots of fruit already this morning, and drink good fluid. And now she's already start uh, checking everybody, and seem like, who are they? Who are you? And are you going to be nice to me? And she she seem like really interesting to people. Her personality uh, slightly calmer now, and also because in the in in Mimi new room now we got lots of climbing thing, and she's been checking and she's been practice her, her swinging around skill. She's a good climber. Mimi's calm and relaxed acceptance of her new surroundings has allowed the team to make the decision to introduce her to one of the adult females in the nursery. Um, well, I think I'd like to try Roro here. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah. Yes, okay, Roro, Roro has recently joined the nursery from Tuan's group and she's proven quite a hit with the youngsters. Hopefully, she'll take Mimi under her wing and look after her when the more boisterous older boys get to meet her. Roro pokes her head into the bedroom to check out the new arrival. She's not overly forward towards the little orangutan and gives Mimi time and space to get used to the presence of a large adult. Then, Roro heads back down the tunnel. It doesn't make for a very dramatic introduction, but actually it's really good because nobody's pressuring anyone. So for Mimi, she might eventually become curious why isn't Roro, like, all over me? So, really pleased. Hopefully, things will progress. We just have to give it time. But um, Roro's going to have another drive-by, so let's see. Roro's second attempt at making contact is more successful. Yeah, let's just see what happens here. <clears throat> oh, that's good. The two start to interact, but with Mimi disinclined to share. Just so greedy with her th things, and Roro's holding her ground, but being nice about it. Oh, oh, then I'll take this one. Yeah. Roro is playing the introduction perfectly, encouraging Mimi by not being too confrontational, and letting the youngster come to her. For a moment. Mimi even forgets about the stuffed toy hedgehog she's been clinging to since leaving Moscow Zoo. I'm kind of amazed that she left the hedgehog. Yeah, it, it's brilliant. It's not going to be any different. So I would consider whether or not you sleep them together overnight with the two rooms. And then they can choose. Roro's not going to do anything horrible. Before long, the pair are playing together. We couldn't have asked for more. She's already sort of dumped the hedgehog. She's climbing in the hoses. And she appears far more relaxed and orangutan-like. Um, couldn't have done better today. And we just need to take it nice, calm, and slow. And I'll let everybody in Moscow know how well it's gone. They'll be so pleased. Really, really happy. And um, I think Mimi's going to have a good future here in the nursery group. But for now, the excitement of the morning has tired out Mimi, and she settles down to a well-earned nap. <music> Little Mimi isn't the only new arrival at the park this year, although she's certainly one of the cutest. Competing for the title, however, are the beautiful babies who arrive to swell the ranks of the woolly monkeys. They're all the offspring of dominant male Chippy. First to arrive was Pekaya's son, Claude, just beating Paquita to the post with her new baby, 
Cassius. Hmm. Good boy. Next, along came Cosmo, born to Paquita's daughter Isla, making Paquita a grandmother for the first time. Perhaps scoring lower on the adorable scale were the park's two new stump-tailed macaques, Toto and Freddy from Belgium. Oh, good boy! Toto, however, got top marks for his handsome looks, although was lower down the order than Freddy when it came to making friends and fitting in. Fred could do with coming back, really. <laughs> Among the more unusual newcomers this year were five slow lorises from Hong Kong. Go on, you two. After a few false starts, they've now all been paired up with a mate and have settled in. Oh, welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The team also welcomed a new ring-tailed lemur, rescued by the RSPCA, who they named Al. Lacking in confidence at first, he eventually found a friend in female Kaya. And two new marmosets, rescued from the British pet trade, now have a home at the park. Common marmoset Moon. There you are, little man. Hey, you! Hey, gorgeous! And Jeffroy's marmoset Frank. It's been a busy year, and there's bound to be no let up in the months to come as more primates needing a better life arrive at the park. Alison and the team are already making plans for three new squirrel monkeys in need of refuge. Why would people find this remotely acceptable or remotely OK? I don't know. After 30 years of rescuing and caring for primates in need, the park's work continues. And the results are clear to see.